And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy. You know that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games that are releasing? As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about The Medium. This is an Xbox Series X S console exclusive that is also on Windows PC Store and Steam. It's from Bloober Team, the, the developers behind the excellent Layers of Fear horror games, Observer, and the more recent Blair Witch game. Despite me not being that crazy about Blair Witch, overall, they seem to really understand horror and I was really looking forward to this one. And just so you know, uh, moving forward, this footage is captured on both an Xbox Series X and mostly a PC and is spoiler free and mostly only just shows like the first two hours of the game or so to avoid anything big. So I've been playing a review copy of the medium. I have finished it and uh, just to get right in front of the gate, the medium is fine, straight up. Like it doesn't do anything necessarily bad, and it doesn't really blow me away either. And that's a shame because I, I really wanted to love this game. To some players, I think being just fine might be the biggest sin if it's not that interesting. You know, there are some great moments. There are some creative ideas worth experiencing. And then there's some underwhelming parts. And by the end, seeing the whole package, I found myself just kind of saying, huh, okay. You know, there's not really another way to explain it other than me expressing my feelings or opinions like this. So let's talk about what it does do right though. Uh, first, it's the presentation. So you play as Marianne, a woman in Poland in the late 90s who is like a medium between two worlds. She can connect with this weird, gross, awful world of the dead and help lost souls pass on. The aesthetic here in this other world is immediately Pretty cool. People in the land of the dead have these unnerving porcelain masks and the environments are trippy and gross with a little bit of a tinge of a sci-fi look to them. It's all very otherworldly. The game also has this split screen effect that a lot of people have hyped up. It's where you're controlling Marianne in both worlds. And although I did experience some texture pop in shifting back and forth occasionally, it actually struggled a little bit more on me for PC than it did on, on Xbox. It is still ultimately very impressive. It's like stuff like there are dangers in the meta world or objects blocking your path in the real world and then most of the game is figuring out workarounds and solving puzzles between both of these dimensions. You know it is creative, the concept is cool, but I liked it much more from a visual standpoint than anything else because the puzzles that utilize this so much were really simple and not very challenging. They kept me mildly engaged, sure, but nothing stumped me at all and I just kind of breezed through everything and it all felt like it was like early game puzzles and it was going to get harder later on but it never happened and it felt like it was like that through the entire adventure and that stuff needs to be really strong considering this game has no combat this is a walk around enjoy the story the scary atmosphere solve mysteries type game you know I love that it has no combat really just a bit of like stealth and chase scenes here and there that not having combat thing is refreshing but I just wish other gameplay elements were a bit stronger. Especially because the chase scenes that happen occasionally, they are very cool. From a gameplay perspective, they can come off a bit trial and error and might frustrate you a bit because they're not always clear at first. It's a little rough, but conceptually and cinematically, they are kind of cool to experience. I just wish there were a few more gameplay moments like this and some of the elements from these things that I can't spoil that they just did not capitalize on the potential. It seemed very clear where they could have went and they didn't and I was kind of bummed. Now what it does have going for it is some of the visual elements. Like, like I said, this game does not let you control the camera, which is very awesome and old school. Think like the static camera angles of old Resident Evil games, you know, like they shift to different perspectives when you turn a corner or enter a new area. Although here, the camera does move with you in cinematic and convincing ways. This makes for some really freaking outstanding looking scenes. The amount of times I stopped to take screenshots during this game was through the roof. You know, the ca creative camera angles, the dark shadows, the moonlight through the trees or the windows. Okay. I had a great time at least looking around at this world. Yeah. Um, also, on the sound front, Troy Baker does a voice in this game, and it's a pretty different role for him that I really, really enjoyed hearing. He goes all in on it, and it's actually really great, especially when you couple like that performance and all that stuff and the visual stuff with the music. Some of it was composed by Akira Yamoka, if I'm pronouncing that right, who is actually famous for his work on the Silent Hill series. 
And yeah, I mean, the music he does is pretty great here. I'd say it's not on the level of being as iconic as his other stuff. It's even more subdued here, but it does the job well. So it, that's the hardest part, man, is that you have cool, classic horror style camera angles, an emphasis on story, a legendary composer, incredible art and environmental design. That should check all your boxes, Jake, what's wrong? Well, the thing for me is that the entire game focuses on a story that just it didn't grip me. I will say the tone at the start is very cool, the intro and all that, then it kind of goes in a different direction. I will compliment them on some of the themes that this game tackles. You know, there's a dash of Polish history, there's some socioeconomical stuff, uh, the skeletons that people keep in their closet and how that can rot their souls, uh, some grim stuff like murder, intrigue, and even pedophilia. But even tackling this stuff, it just still doesn't hit as hard as it could, and that's a damn shame. Maybe it's that Marianne, the main character herself, isn't to stand out or that the game throws a lot of character names and journal entries and notes at you very early on in the game and it kind of takes a second to figure out what they're going for and then when you do have it all revealed to you it's kind of flat or that the ending just kind of pops up and isn't really that satisfying. I get what they were going for like it was enough to keep me playing throughout but not enough to really be too memorable. If this was moment to moment awesome shit throughout, maybe it would justify this short playthrough. I didn't time it exactly, but I'd say roughly, I don't know, eight, nine hours long. The developers were forthcoming about the length before release, at least, I do appreciate that. But on Steam, they're asking for $50, so it can be a tough sell for some people. I really wanted to recommend this game, even just hearing about it and now playing it, I can't and I can't at full price. You know, there are some cool monsters in this game. There are some cool experimental puzzles and camera angles and the dual reality thing is impressive. It really feels like there was a lot of passion behind what Bluebird was doing with this game, but not enough for it to stick the landing. There is heart in the visual and sound design, but not enough for it to be completely memorable. There is heart and a lot of love into the horror elements. They've been doing this before. The game centers around tension. There's not really jump scares or anything like that. It's just kind of an overall unsettling time. It's not actually scary, but I can forgive that when the vibe is cool. And it mostly is here, but again, it could be kind of forgettable. And the story. I think people put some love behind the characters and some of the concepts in the game, but coupled all together, when it all came together in the package, still just didn't stick for me. Uh, I hate to say this, you know, a lot of my peers, other people you may watch might be saying the same thing. I'm just predicting. I, I hate to sound like a parrot or something, but this is a Game Pass type game. You know, do you have Game Pass on your PC or your Xbox? Then play this. I mean, what, what do you got to lose? It's not too long and it's got some interesting ideas, even if some of them are a bit forgettable, but going out and buying it at full price you might be disappointed. You're probably gonna be disappointed. Like I said, it's not a bad game or a failure or a disaster or anything like that. It's just okay. You know, it's in the middle. You can even say it's, uh, you know what? No, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna do a medium joke, even though I basically just did. I do pull this one out of my pocket sometimes, but I do it when I, I care about what's going on here. A sequel where they really kind of expand upon things and, and nail a lot of elements down in a stronger way. The medium two could really blow people away and like it could become like a, a bigger horror thing. We need more horror games. We need more horror games that try weird stuff like this. And I'm glad that at the very least, some people who have Game Pass will try this game and at least see what they were going for here. But I think I'm talking myself in circles. So uh, let me wrap this up. Of course, this is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and a lot of personal opinion here. As you could tell, this is what I felt about the game, but I wanna hear from you guys in the comments what you're thinking about the medium. This is of course coming out just a bit before the game releases. How do you feel? Did you breeze through it in one playthrough? Uh, what do you think about the story? What do you think about the characters? What do you think about some of those gameplay elements? It's really a cut and dry, pretty simple game. So I'd love to hear what you think. If this helped you out though, informed your purchase, maybe steered you in, a, in the right direction, clicking the like button does help us out. We would actually really appreciate that. Thank you. But if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day if that's something you want. But hey, as always, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. I felt lost. I came to Neva looking for answers and all I got was more questions. What was that monster? Who was Thomas? And what did he want from me?